Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel, I'm Rob and today we'll be jumping into some malicious compliance. Our first story today comes to us from Independent Okra 8577 Nah, we don't need a professional to fell those trees. Okay, let's jump right in. This is the story of how my dad, with my consent but against my advice, accidentally weaponized a tree. I live in the capital of a Central European country and recently visited my parents at the countryside. They needed me to help deal with some trees they wanted to fell. I assumed they wanted to finally make short work of the semi-healthy trees along the driveway that kept branching into the way, but no, they decided that the row of beaches at the southeastern corner of the property had to go. You should know three things here. One, those trees are really, really tall, like 15 meters, about 50 feet, and rather thin. Two, there is an equally high barn just a few meters behind those trees on the neighbor's property to the south. It is pretty old, but has been renovated time and time again to serve as a storage and party location. Three, in front of the trees are compost containers, a crooked walnut tree, and bushes that my mother planted, creating a corridor of only around 7 meters, 23 feet, for the trees to land in without breaking anything. Also important, my sister, also living in a bigger city and not present when these events took place, and I are actually co-owners of the house and property, as my father transferred ownership to us some years ago. While so far those beaches had survived their fair share of storms, they'd probably become a problem as they kept growing. And since new neighbors on the property bordering on the eastern side are in the process of building a house, they'd be their problem as well, so I agreed that they had to go. However, my parents wanted to fell them by themselves, meaning my dad would be the one to operate the chainsaw on them. He worked as a technician before retiring, always did a lot of repair and building work in and around the house, but he is past 70, has adopted a rather unhealthy lifestyle after leaving the workforce, and his eyesight and motoric skills, while still perfectly suited for most kinds of technical operations, have deteriorated a bit. Knowing this, I objected and suggested hiring a professional to do the job and sharing the costs. I argued that any damage, Beechwood is pretty heavy, or injury that might occur if things went sideways wouldn't be covered by insurance and thus come in quite costly. Also, doing this without even as much as notifying the local authorities might be illegal. Okay, it's the countryside. If any regulations of such kind even exist, folks here like to interpret them as friendly advice rather than actual law, but I digress. My parents wouldn't have any of it, and even refused to get an estimate from a professional. I did some basic research and found out that the cost would probably come in at around 500 to 1,000 euro, 600 to $1,200, not a small sum, but the forester or lumberjack who'd take up the work would be responsible for any damage. No dice, even after trying to bring my points across several times, nah, we don't need a professional, why should we waste money when we can do it by ourselves? They said, it will be fine, they said, literally. And while I usually am able to put them off bad ideas by convincing one of them, this time both were hellbent on going for it. And once that is the case, all hope is basically lost, as especially my mother can be the most stubborn as heck. At least I know whom I inherited this trait from. As a property co-owner, I technically could have just forbidden my parents to fell those trees on their own, but they're my parents, I love them. They're adults, they live there and keep stuff in order, so I refrain from taking this route. So I told them that they should go ahead if they really want to, but I would not help them with this. My mom asked if I would help them cutting it up and carrying the wood once the trees were laying on the ground. Important aspect, I agreed. Also, I begged them to wait for my sister to call them the next day at lunchtime, since I messaged her about the situation and she wanted to back me up. But no, next morning I was woken up by my mother calling me to help cutting up the first tree, which my father had brought down successfully. So I dutifully crawled out of bed and did my part in this little deforestation project. Tree 2 and 3 out of 5 also were felled without any incidents. Then came tree 4. My father apparently had not seen a higher up branch that stretched between the branches of tree 5. So once the chainsaw had fully severed the stem, instead of falling sideways as intended, it got caught up, swirled around its axis, and crashed into the walnut tree, which started to bend significantly due to the load. 
Now they wanted me to help moving the beach by pushing it to roll along the edge of one of the walnut tree's main branches. Besides me knowing that this wasn't doable, as I said, a 15 meter high tree is a heavy affair. I refused. But you said you'd help us once a tree is felled, they pleaded. I pointed out that I'd only assist once it was laying on the ground, and leaning into the walnut tree doesn't quite fit that definition. More pleading, but now it was my time to be stubborn, and rightfully so. Since there was no way to, or machinery, to pull the beach away, my father decided to cut parts of its lower stem until handling it would be possible. Multiple laws of physics, however, intervened after he had cut the second large chunk, shifting the center mass of the beach so that it suddenly started to tilt when its branches prevented it from sliding downwards as intended. Then, the walnut tree reacted to the lighter load and shift of balance by springing back, knocking the beach into the neighbor's barn like a battering ram. The dry wooden wall planks didn't stand a chance and splintered away as the felled tree forced its way into the building, creating an impressive hole. My parents now stood there dumbfounded. My dad slowly scratched his head and tried to realize the situation while my mother slowly started to panic. Oh no, 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 what do we do now? What if the neighbor calls the police on us? I had watched the spectacle from the balcony and couldn't decide whether to be shocked or to descend into uncontrollable laughter. Closer investigation from outside showed that the tree had crushed a chair, a table, and also caused a cupboard with party equipment to collapse. Though my dad had at least reached his goal and freed the beach from the grasp of the walnut tree, but there was no way of getting it unstuck from the barn without entering. A few hours later, the neighbor, who knew about my parents' plans, returned home, which is where this story might have taken a very bitter and costly turn, but he proved to be a very gracious guy and took the incident, which in the worst case could have made the whole barn collapse in stride. He first was negatively amazed by what had transpired, but after inspection of the barn, he didn't deem it to be necessary to involve the insurance or officials, and said he would repair the damage by himself if my parents agreed to pay for the materials, replacement of the destroyed furniture, thanks neighbor, and some beer, probably a lot of beer for his time, which they gladly accepted. His bill isn't in yet as he has just began patching up the hole, but it will easily be upwards of 2,000 euros, roughly $2,400, plus the beer of course, still making a professional tree removal look like a really good deal. My father offered him to assist with the repairs, the neighbor thought about it for the fraction of a second, then politely declined. I wonder why. P.S. Tree 5 is still standing. I have to admit, I really enjoy doing things myself, there's a lot of jobs that I'll just jump right into, but I definitely have a limit. There's a point where you have to call in the professionals, otherwise you just know things are gonna go wrong. In the comments, OP was asked what their sister's reaction was, and they said a little bit of dismay and a lot of uncontrollable laughter. Do me a quick favor, have a look down below the video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're not actually subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. Our next story today comes to us from the Potato Fairy 95. X boss accused me of reporting him, so I did. Let's jump right in. I worked for his small company for six weeks at the end of 2020. It was landscape architecture. He sacked me with no real explanation when I was off sick with COVID. I have undiagnosed, highly suspected ADHD, so I wasn't massively surprised it affects my performance. But I was surprised by the timing and the fact that it was via email. I asked for more clarity. I was never rude to him. I just told him I wish he'd called me so I could get some feedback. He got really mad and proceeded to write a long list of my over-exaggerated and some false shortcomings, too slow, distracted, stuff he never mentioned at the time. He then said, if you want to take legal action against me, let me know. I didn't, I left it and moved on. Fast forward to today, he just called my mobile from a private number asking how I was. I was taken aback as we have had no communication since. He said, someone has put in a report I'm using unlicensed software. Was it you? Because I know we left on bad terms. I said, I've no idea what you're talking about. He made it seem I was devastated he sacked me <laughs> and would have a good reason to report him. No matter what I said, he was convinced it was me. He even accused my dad who works in IT. 
I didn't even know he was using unlicensed software. I said, I feel like you're unfairly accusing me here. He raised his voice and shouted, why do you always play the victim? Stop playing the victim. Probably in reference to the fact that I questioned the way he sacked me. It sounded so rehearsed, I honestly had to hold back laughter. Then he said, I'm not accusing you, but did you do it? <laughs> Looking back, I believe it was unlicensed. We only ever used the student version of Autodesk, which is illegal when you're running a business. This combined with his accusation tells me he is in fact breaking the law. I was so pissed off by his accusation, I reported him to both Autodesk and the BSA. He'll have to run an audit and likely face a huge fine. He thinks I did it either way, so what harm can one more report do? Yep, that's the way to do this one. Hey, I didn't report you, but thanks for the idea. Click. Our next story today comes to us from Stitch Converse. Keep picking me for a random locker search? Meet my underwear. Let's jump right in. Many years ago, I worked for an outdoor activity center and playland in the retail department. Throughout the park, there were many different shops that we manned, and I absolutely loved working there, despite it being hard work for little pay. One day, I had a run-in with a manager who seriously berated me in front of the entire team, along with others from different departments. I was advised by a manager from a different team to make a formal complaint, which I did. Others came out with similar complaints and said manager was advised to find employment elsewhere, but not sacked. Now, unbeknownst to me, I triggered the chain of events that would lead to me leaving the company. Now before the main story, there's some background info that is relevant to my malicious compliance. There were a few rules in place that were designed to prevent theft, including no more than 10 pounds to be allowed on the shop floor, which was to be checked before your shift. Anything over this must be declared to management and left in your locker and all staff had to agree to random locker and pocket searches. In the two years I'd worked here had never been picked for a random search. There were around several hundred employees, so the odds were incredibly slim. As soon as our disgraced manager left, I suddenly found myself picked at random for a search. This involved turning out my pockets, removing my shoes and socks, and then being escorted to the locker room to empty the contents out. Nothing was found, so I was sent back to the shop floor. The following week, I was again picked at random for a search, which again turned up nothing. Rumors were soon doing the round that I had upset my department's remaining management team after instigating the action against my former manager, and they were going to force me out using any means necessary. I realized that I needed to act, so started job hunting, and then began my malicious compliance. I started taking a backpack to work filled with 20 pounds in pennies. Every morning, I declared the amount in my locker as required, and sure enough, after a couple of days, I was once again selected for my weekly random search. I got paid to watch a security guard and supervisor, count 2,000 pennies. As expected, I passed said surge and off I went. This happened a second time with now 30 pounds in pennies and I decided to up my game. At the start of the following week, I patiently awaited my random surge with glee knowing what awaited them. The day soon arrived and off I was marched to the lockers ready for their treat. I lift out my backpack and pass it to the security guard and supervisor who dive straight in without any gloves. Oh, how they retched as they discovered what was in there. I had several pairs of my period-soaked pants waiting in there, especially for them. They were gingerly laid on the floor beside my bag as they counted my bag of pennies. The smell from the pants was unreal. They'd been festering in there for days in anticipation. Once again, the search revealed nothing and off to work I went. After that, I was not picked for another search again. I left after a couple more weeks to a new job, and keeping in touch with some people, I discovered that a new rule was introduced that tried dictating what you could and couldn't take to work with you. This soon led to a mass walkout of staff, and after a year, the place shut down due to unrelated matters. Well, OP, that was an interesting yet disgusting way to deal with the situation. Keep in mind in the future that you would have had grounds for constructive dismissal if you'd put in a claim within six months of leaving and before they actually shut down. Check out all three OPs in the description down below. Thanks for watching, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow.